Hi, I'm going to demo a web application called Flow that I've been building in my spare time. The interesting thing about Flow is that it's built upon a new database called FluidDB that's been created by a company called FluidInfo. The web application is served by FluidDB, stores all its data within FluidDB, and is itself data stored in FluidDB. Just to be clear here, there is no server-side web framework involved, so no Django, Rails or ASP.NET for example. In fact, Flow is simply a bunch of HTML, CSS and JavaScript resources stored in FluidDB. I've had some help. Sammy, jQuery and other JavaScript resources have made much of this possible and very quickly. My intention in creating Flow is to have a suite of small reusable applications for interacting with FluidDB through the browser. Although it's early days, I want to show you what I've managed to write so far. As FluidDB is currently in alpha, you need to register for a username and password at FluidInfo's website. Once you have, you'll be able to sign into Flow and the user authentication application was one of the first ones that I wrote. All it is is simply typing in your username and password and logging in. Nice and simple. Now that we're logged in, we can start to use Flow to explore the data that's stored in FluidDB. As Flow itself is data within FluidDB, let's have a look at Flow. So I'm loading the object that represents the Flow application, and this is a list of tags that define the attributes that are associated with the Flow object. Each attribute has a value that is the file that is served to the web browser. So, for example, if I edit the home.html file, clicking here, Flow pulls it all back for me and puts in a nice formatted text editor for me to have a look at. So in fact, Flow is self-hosting in that I can edit Flow from within Flow. Cool. But that's not all. It's not just text-based values that I can change. Uh, I'm using Chrome at the moment but if I were to move over to Firefox I can start to have a look at and edit uh, values that are of a binary nature. For example I might want to have a look at this PDF. It's loading it. It's using some magic funky JavaScript from Google to show me the PDF and I can load a replacement for example from the file system um, to replace the PDF data that's within FluidDB. Before being able to add values into the FluidDB database we need to define what sort of attributes we can attach to objects that we can then store values against. Uh, these attributes are called tags uh, in FluidDB and this is the uh, terminology that Flow uses. So I'm looking at the tags and namespaces. Namespaces are the way we organize tabs into related groups. Uh, I'm looking at the tags and namespaces that are organized under the namespace Entol, which is me. So these are the uh, attributes that I've defined. So as you can see, I've added a comment tag, friend tag, rating tag. Uh, I can navigate down, just like in a file system. Uh, here's the namespace for flow, the application. And here are more namespaces and tags required for the flow application. A namespace has a, a description, which I can edit should I want to. Um, I can add a new namespace add a new tag, I can have a look at information about various tags and do all sorts of useful administrative things in order to define the attributes used within FluidDB.
So we've seen how tags can be organized um, to represent attributes that are attached to objects that represent things in FluidDB. And tags can also have a value associated with them as well. Uh, but FluidDB wouldn't be much of a database if there was no way for you to be able to search for useful information. So to this end, we have a little search application. Uh, FluidDB implements a very simple query language that's currently under development. So I'm going to put uh, a very simple query in. Um, has FluidDB users username? Which basically is saying, give me a list of all the users in the system. Um, what's returned are a list of those objects that match this query. Um, the object is identified by its uh, globally unique ID and if I were to click on one of these objects we'd be taken to the object view to be able to see what other tags and interesting things were associated with this object. This object obviously being a user. Um, Obviously, there are more complicated uh, search queries that one can make, and these are detailed within the application itself. And I suggest you take a read of those documents on the Fluid Info site as well. Obviously, it's early days for Flow. Uh, what you've seen is uh, pretty incomplete. Um, but I've been really, really happy with developing against FluidDB, uh, and I'll be blogging about this uh, on my website, which can be found at ntol.org. Uh, my name's Nicholas Tolovey. I hope you found this interesting. Um, and any comments and suggestions, uh, well, please attach them to this video.